The following is distributed by the Berean Call. Chapter 14. Capitalism Over the Cliff The real battle for human freedom and destiny is not between capitalists and communists, and by imagining that it is, the West has doomed itself to eventual and certain defeat. Marxism is a religion that is determined to destroy every rival faith. In spite of its worldwide destruction of lives and freedom, Marxism retains its mystical hold upon Western intellectuals because it embodies a rebellion against the God of the Bible that has a peculiar power to seduce human imagination. New Age psycho-spiritual technologies that seem to demonstrate that self is God only reinforce this endemic rebellion and hasten the eventual destruction of Western civilization. Anyone disputing the proven economic superiority of free enterprise over Marxism is denying the evidence of the past 65 years during which Soviet-led international communism has failed completely to prove Marxist-Leninist theories. Nevertheless, Capitalism will never defeat communism because the battle is a moral and spiritual one, which the West is ill-prepared to fight. In God We Trust, once the genuine motto of America, has become for the majority of Americans an embarrassing carryover of superstition from our forebears. We have doomed ourselves and our children to the faith that William Penn prophesied, quote, If men will not be governed by God, then they must be governed by tyrants, unquote. General Douglas MacArthur warned, quote, History fails to record a single precedent in which nations subject to moral decay have not passed into political and economic decline. There has been either a spiritual awakening to overcome the moral lapse or a progressive deterioration leading to ultimate national disaster. Unquote. The Fatal Disadvantage of Western Democracies Capitalism will eventually lose its battle with communism because moral degradation is undermining capitalist democracies much more rapidly than it is communist countries. Rejecting moral absolutes, Marxism blatantly proclaims its determination to drag God from his throne and destroy all religion. In the West, we hide our rebellion against God behind a facade of broad-minded respect for all religions, we sanctify our practical atheism with Christmas carols and observances of Yom Kippur and Easter, justifying our hedonistic love of pleasure and selfish lust for money, possessions, and power as the legitimate capitalist pursuit of business or personal success, we salve our consciences with the specious slogan, Success is not a sin. We are only too eager to believe psychology's lie, preached from modern pulpits, that guilt is a neurosis, a loss of self-esteem, to be cured by positive thinking rather than what it really is, the universal indictment of conscience that all have sinned against God and desperately need forgiveness. Solzhenitsyn puts it well, quote, We have placed too much hope in political and social reforms only to find out that we were being deprived of our most precious possession, our spiritual life. This is the real crisis. Only moral criteria can help the West against communism's well-planned world strategy, unquote. In the name of sophisticated liberalism, Westerners have rejected moral absolutes, exactly what communists have done in the name of militant atheism. The Communist Manifesto clearly states, quote, We reject every moral dogma whatsoever, unquote. However, the Marxist state does not allow immorality to run wild, as we do in the West. On the contrary, it imposes harsh laws and enforces them ruthlessly. Lenin explained it this way, quote, Our morality is wholly subordinate to the interests of the class struggle, unquote. In other words, the Marxist state invents a communist morality that has nothing to do with good and evil, but has everything to do with the destruction of whatever stands in the way of communism's strategy for global conquest. This places Western democracies at a fatal disadvantage. They tolerate rebellion, anarchy, and a moral deterioration of society that totalitarian communist regimes, not for moral reasons but for self-preservation, would not allow for a moment. That will be our downfall, unless some miracle intervenes. 
Solzhenitsyn has commented, quote, Strangely enough, though the best social conditions have been achieved in the West, there still is criminality, considerably more of it than in the pauper and lawless Soviet society, unquote. Though Marxism has destroyed individual freedom, it has also kept criminals under control. One can walk the streets of Moscow or Beijing at any time of day or night without fear of being mugged, raped, or robbed. The same cannot be said of New York, a mugging every five minutes, Chicago or Los Angeles. Unless the deepening moral sickness in the West is cured very soon by turning back to God, Western civilization is doomed to go the way of Rome, with the communists taking over. Unfortunately, as Abraham Lincoln remarked of his contemporaries, quote, Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us. Unquote. Today the vacuum, tomorrow the Holocaust. The Western world is plagued by the disintegration of the home, escalating crime and the rampant use of drugs, not only by teenagers and dropouts, but by successful businessmen, screen stars, and athletic heroes. The demoralizing influence of nude bars and openly flaunted homosexuality and pornography, as well as the filth that is dumped on us from TV and movie screens, all under the banner of quote-unquote liberation from moral absolutes and protected by our courts in the name of freedom of expression, have unquestionably eroded the Judeo-Christian ethic that is so essential to a free society. New Age placebos of higher states of consciousness, guided imagery, positive affirmations, and self-deification may seem for a time to have the answer, but the promise of infinite potential will prove to be a delusion in the end simply because it trusts self instead of God and confuses the two. Once Americans sang sincerely, Our Father's God to Thee, author of liberty, to Thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by Thy might, great God our King. More recently, however, psychologists and sociologists have persuaded us that freedom comes not from obeying God, but from rebelling against Him and doing our own thing. Having no totalitarian ethic to put in place of the Judeo-Christian one we have abandoned, we are left with a false freedom that produces emptiness, restlessness, alienation, disillusionment, and cynicism, the existential malaise that leads only to self-destruction and hastens the communist victory. Into this moral and spiritual vacuum, as we have already explained, the Eastern gurus came. They have persuaded us to believe an ancient lie, called by some the ancient wisdom, the lie of our own inherent goodness, greatness, and godhood that has enshrouded the Hindu-Buddhist world in untold misery and darkness. Having become the vehicle of this lie in the West, the New Age movement sincerely believes, in spite of abundant evidence to the contrary, that a new world can be created on the foundation of inherent human goodness and infinite potential. We simply need to begin to love one another. One hears again the haunting echo of the flower children's catchy slogan, Make Love, Not War, that ended in the disillusionment of Big Sur and Hate Ashbury. But this time around it is not a few counterculture dropouts waving the naive banner. It is top scientists, university professors, wealthy business leaders, and high-level politicians. Consequently, the destruction that will follow in the wake of this movement will not be confined to Jonestown and hippie communes, but will be a worldwide holocaust beyond imagination. Love Rediscovered Darwin turned man into an animal. Marx turned him into an evil beast. Freud decided that man was a sexually oriented bundle of neuroses programmed by edible conflicts in early childhood that could be cured by psychotherapy. In a vain attempt to achieve the status of science, psychology and sociology became very professional and very impersonal. Human beings were studied like so many experimental animals in a laboratory. Whatever rats did became the standard for humans. Leo Biscaglia, who teaches love at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, writes, quote, My students and I did a study. We went through books in psychology. We went through books in sociology. We went through books in anthropology. 
and we were hard pressed to find even a reference to the word love. This is shocking. Unquote. Since then, Professor Buscalia has brought love into psychology and made it famous. Wherever he speaks, lecture halls are crowded to overflowing with admirers who stand in line for 30 minutes or more afterward just to get a hug from the man who rediscovered love and has sold it for a considerable profit. This is not to cast any doubt upon Buscalia's sincere motivation. His audiences grooving on love seem hauntingly reminiscent of those that crowded lecture halls in the 1920s to hear Kue repeat his famous formula quote, Every day and in every way, I am getting better and better. Unquote. Buscalia's message is even more appealing. We do not have to get better, for we are already perfect just the way we are. We have, however, good cause to question the validity of Buscalia's brand of love. Indeed, for all his brave words, it seems that he is, after all, not so sure himself, for he says, quote, Therein lies the only certitude. That we can only be certain about uncertainty. Unquote. Unfortunately, while love is as beautiful as Professor Buscalia paints it, the human heart is just as capable of hatred. This raises some serious problems that he does not face. The Bible declares, Let us love one another, for love is from God, for God is love. It goes on to explain that the supreme act of love was God becoming a man to die for our sins. And that those who believe this good news and receive God's forgiveness in Jesus Christ are born of God and know God, and because of this are able to love one another. Buscalia's brand of love, however, comes from self, which he confuses with God. Love and self are one, he asserts, and self love and love for others are identical. Whether or not Buscalia's New Age love is really God's love, Will become clear to everyone as Earth approaches its Holocaust. With uncritical approval, Buscalia quotes from Anne Frank's diary quote, No matter, I still believe that at heart man is good. Unquote. In typical New Age fashion, he calls this naive statement quote, perhaps the greatest tribute to the good in man. Unquote. But of course, it is not a tribute at all. Far from being a mature judgment based upon experience and facts, it was the wishful dream, the vain hope of a young girl desperate to deny the evil that was about to swallow her family, as it already had so many millions. Her idealistic illusion was tragically trampled under the heavy, blood stained boots of fascist monsters who actually took pleasure in torture and murder. The same fate awaits those who imagine that if we will only lay down our weapons, then the Soviets will do likewise, and the whole world will suddenly recognize our oneness with each other and the cosmos, and live happily ever after, making love instead of war. Can we really explain away Hitler's Holocaust by blindly affirming that at heart man is good, or escape the far greater nuclear holocaust hanging over our heads by New Age creative visualization? As part of their continuing plan for world conquest, the Soviets are preparing for nuclear war. We will not charm them out of it by chanting the appealing mantra, Love, love, love. The major weakness in Bascalia's New Age brand of love is that it is self oriented and therefore has no principles and no commitment except to oneself. When asked what the first commandment was, Jesus replied, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. In contrast, Buscalia says, one's first responsibility in love is, and always will be, to himself. Love giving out of a sense of duty or obligation is the greatest insult, and therefore not love at all. Unquote. So Buscalia's love can make no promise to be faithful and true. What kind of love is that? Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that ye love one another, even as I have loved you. In the New Age, there simply is no unfaithfulness, no sin, no guilt. Buscalia says, quote, No one is guilty. We are all innocents. Unquote. Presumably, this includes mass murderers such as Hitler, Stalin, and Mao. Everything has to be positive in the New Age. Positive affirmation of our infinite potential and inherent perfection is offered as the solution for the evil that Hinduism, like Christian science, Tries to pass off as an illusion. 
As W. Brew Joy says, quote, There are no rights or wrongs, only the infinite interaction of forces, unquote. Bascalia adds, quote, We become the powerful force ourselves, unquote. There are no absolutes in the new age, because we are each God, one with the universe and each other, so there is no one to pass judgment upon us. This rediscovered love is the same old rebellion, dressed in a new suit of the emperor's clothes. Why Communism is the Odds Maker's Favorite Bascalia knows how to make us feel good about ourselves. He declares that man's, quote, main function is to help unfold his true self. He is still the creator of his own destiny by listening to himself, unquote. This leads to such absurdities as his statement, quote, If you feel like smearing ink on a wall, you do it. Say, that came out of me. It's my creation. I did it, and it is good, unquote. Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Jim Jones, Charles Manson, and others could say the same thing. Quote, I felt like murder and destruction. It came out of me. It's my creation. I did it, and it is good. Unquote. This blanket sanctification of self-will, with its accompanying fear of inhibiting self-expression, has made teaching in America's high schools one of the most dangerous professions and has turned the streets of our major cities into jungles and our criminal courts into wrist-slapping mockeries more concerned for criminals than for their victims. Bascalia's New Age faith in self as perfect, in whatever it does, only proves G.K. Chesterton right once again. Quote, when a man ceases to believe in God, he doesn't believe in nothing, he believes in anything. Unquote. Nature is ruthless, and evolution is utterly without sympathy for weakness. If evolution is true, then Hitler, Stalin, and Mao were right, and the rest of us are wrong. Denying our Darwinian faith, we build hospitals, promote charities, and spend billions in research to assist the survival of the diseased and handicapped, thus working against the very evolutionary process that we jealously guard as the one and only scientific theory of the origin of life that can be taught in our public schools. With a citizenry that demands the right to do its own thing, Western governments cannot win the battle for this planet in competition with totalitarian regimes that force their enslaved subjects to sacrifice pleasure, possessions, and life itself for the victory of communism. It should be no surprise that we have been losing this battle, and the eventual outcome, barring a miracle, is plain to be seen for those who refuse to delude themselves any longer. If we sincerely turned back to the true God, there would be hope. Unfortunately, however, the new age has enthroned self in his place. Selfism and Occultism Martin L. Gross has called Americans, quote, the most anxious, emotionally insecure, and analyzed population in the history of man. Unquote. Marilyn Ferguson writes, quote, The search for self becomes a search for health, for wholeness. Unquote. Americans spend $100 billion annually on health care, which is about one month's salary for every worker in America. No other nation even comes close to this. Psychology and the New Age movement have obsessed us with self. Within three pages, Ferguson mentions a new understanding of self, multiple dimensions of self, the merger with a self yet more universal, self-knowledge, redefining the self, the self-released, an unapologetic self, an even larger self, when the self joins the self there is power, beyond the collective self, and a transcendent universal self. Bascalia speaks of loving yourself, the pursuit of self, the discovery of self, a growing self, self-discovery, and self-realization. Gross goes on to say, quote, We live in a civilization in which, as never before, man is preoccupied with self. As the Protestant ethic has weakened in Western society, the confused citizen is turned to the only alternative he knows, the psychological expert who claims there is a new scientific standard of behavior to replace fading traditions. Mouthing the holy name of science, the psychological expert claims to know all. This new truth is fed to us continually from birth to the grave. The schoolhouse has become a vibrant psychological center. The need for psychological expertise follows us doggedly through life. Unquote. Western psychologists and psychiatrists 
are the gurus of the 1980s, leading us into New Age mysticism. Under their direction, we have believed the serpent's lie and have mistaken ourselves for God. Carl Jung wrote, quote, I have called this center the self. It might equally well be called the God within us, unquote. Abraham Maslow's self-actualization is Hinduism's self-realization thinly veiled in the jargon of humanistic psychology. Maslow said, quote, Therefore, if the individual can touch these depths within himself, he discovers not only himself, but also the whole human spirit. The non-academic psychologists, witch doctors, of the East have always known this. We in the West must learn it too, unquote. New Age Thinking for Capitalist Businessmen Within the past two decades, the down-with-the-establishment and up-with-me attitude in the West has taken a mystical leap to the East that can only hasten the communist victory. Selfism has now become the new panacea of medicine, psychiatry, sociology, politics, once materialistic science, and even of business. When the pragmatic, profit-oriented businessman has embraced selfism as the most up-to-date scientific method of achieving his goals, then we are very far down the road indeed. Training in New Age thinking has taken the Bell Telephone System, AT&T, by storm, beginning with top executives and working its way down through all levels, and finally to families and retirees. The 1983 planning calendars for Pacific Telephone Managers are all in New Age motif. Marilyn Ferguson writes, quote, One Aquarian conspirator who works with top management people around the country refers to the new businessmen philosophers who talk to each other until three in the morning about their own changing values and their discoveries of human potential. Big business is becoming aware of the networks of the Aquarian conspiracy. One such underground network is described whose main orientation is radical science and transpersonal psychology and whose photocopying is furnished by the vice chairman of American Telephone and Telegraph. Unquote. The New Age movement is gaining followers and influence in the business world. Professor Russ Ackoff of the famous Horton Graduate School of Business, University of Pennsylvania, is one of the most brilliant and entertaining speakers at high-level management seminars of America's leading corporations, where he spreads his Eastern worldview. Through his best-selling book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill promotes a subtle and dangerous form of spiritism. Hill tells of regularly visualizing Edison, Payne, Emerson, Darwin, and five other men he admired from the past as his quote-unquote invisible counselors. In time, these imaginary figures became apparently real, according to Hill, and their advice proved invaluable. In Grow Rich with Peace of Mind, Hill explains that his philosophies and principles were learned from a disembodied voice belonging to one of the great masters who came to him by astral travel. Like millions of people in every other area of society, businessmen are finding the secret to greater happiness and success, at least temporarily, through scores of different self-help and success seminars. Typical would be LifeSpring, which is very similar to EST, Erhard Seminars Training. Most of these courses are a blend of humanistic psychology with Eastern mysticism, making them part of the New Age movement. LifeSpring's philosophy is basically the same as that of Leo Buscaglia or W. Brew Joy, quote, At the essence, or core, of each of us is a perfect, loving, and caring being. Each of us already has everything necessary to achieve and be all we want in our lives, we literally create our experience of life based upon our beliefs about ourselves and how we expect the universe to react to us, unquote. Those who take LifeSpring and other mind dynamics courses often develop psychic powers such as astral travel and clairvoyance. The revival of occultism that began in drugs and moved on into Eastern mysticism has become so pervasive throughout our society that it has almost become the norm. Experiences that would have been frightening to almost anyone ten years ago are taken for granted today. One top nuclear physicist confessed at a cocktail party that he receives some of his most brilliant ideas out in space, where he sometimes finds himself out of body 
and in the company of other scientists being taught advanced concepts by spirit beings. Of course, in the New Age, very few really believe in spirit beings. Although they may be called that for convenience, they are considered to be like the imaginary guides introduced to kindergartners by confluent education or the inner teacher that Brew Joy consults, that is, just some mysterious manifestation of our own infinite self. New Age Occult Technology Western technology has invented, designed, manufactured, and marketed commercial devices for automatically producing the so-called higher states of consciousness that open the door to occult experiences and psychic powers. What used to take a powerful dose of LSD or months of yoga meditation and vegetarianism can now be accomplished in a few minutes through new devices that are multiplying at an alarming rate. Biofeedback was one of the first such mechanisms. That those who developed it realized what they were doing is indicated by the fact that biofeedback is called electronic yoga. The Manager Clinic of Topeka, Kansas has a promotional film titled Biofeedback, the Yoga of the West. In other words, biofeedback puts you into the same state of consciousness and develops the same control over involuntary bodily functions and the same occult experiences and psychic powers that have been the stock and trade of great yogis since the Garden of Eden. Elmer and Alice Green of the Menninger Clinic, leading authorities on biofeedback, reflect this Hindu-Buddhist occult worldview. Quote, in working with patients, we do not often point out that the detachment to which we refer is a basic feature of yogic training. There are other similarities between biofeedback training and yoga. I guided myself through the development of these ideas in the book by the intentional use of hypnagogic imagery. Whenever I was stuck, I made my mind a blank and asked the unconscious to get the information I needed from wherever it was, from the collective mind, or from the future. I believe that this technique, which I developed over a period of years, is not unique to me, but can be learned by anyone who takes time and makes the effort." Unquote. The film Altered States was about a scientist who experienced an incredible metamorphosis in a sensory isolation tank that he had invented. Like so much of the science fiction being presented to us on the screen, it is not as fictitious as many people think. Another ingenious product to take advantage of the boom in selfism looks exactly like the tank in the movie. In order to find relief from the stress in our modern world, quote, participants spend up to $17 an hour to float in an isolated, weightless, and soundproof environment, unquote. One of the producers is a Beverly Hills firm called Samadhi Incorporated, with a plant capacity of about 600 of these tanks per month, which sell for about $3,500 each. Inside the tank, one is entirely isolated from sight and sound, floating alone in an Epsom salt solution. Heartbeat and breathing cause the body to move erratically, which, together with the sense of weightlessness, creates an altered state of consciousness that can produce out-of-body experiences and develop psychic powers. Quote, Psychologist Eleanor Portner of Pacific Palisades uses the tank for patient therapy and said, Taking away the external stimuli enables someone to move toward the core, their self. Unquote. The Dallas Cowboys plan to install video screens in their tanks and expect to use the unique tanks as part of a future learning center. One psychologist cautioned that, quote, it can be dangerous for some people to come in touch with themselves, unquote. One wonders why that should be if it is really only one self one is coming in contact with. Could it be something else? Samadhi is a Hindu mystical experience of union with Brahman. The Buddhists called it Satori. The fall 1982 issue of Self-Discovery magazine featured an attractive model on the front cover sitting in yoga position. The caption read, Samadhi is loose in America. The quote-unquote astral sounds cassettes offer a natural high. Distributed by Effective Learning Systems Incorporated, the sounds on the tapes were developed by the most modern computer technology and are guaranteed to do much more than simply relax the listener. Users report a wide range of experiences spontaneously produced by the tapes, all the way from physical sensations of a highly sensual and sexual nature, such intense pleasure words can't describe the feeling, erotic sensations, to 
explosions of light and color inside my head, visions, images, a kaleidoscopic visual imagery, out-of-body and psychic experiences. The tapes were reportedly examined by two agencies of the United States government, the U.S. Bioacoustic Scientific Laboratory and the U.S. Army Research Institute for the Behavioral Social Sciences, and were awarded an official GSA, General Services Administration, catalog number, as approved for U.S. government and military purchase. The Soviets have also purchased some of the tapes, reportedly for their mind control experiments. This should be brought to the attention of the United States Senate as a cheaper and quicker way to Samadhi than TM, in view of the very favorable Senate resolution to increase public awareness of the benefits of transcendental meditation. Science Over the Cliff Swami Rama, star performer at the Menninger Clinic and founder of the Himalayan Institute of Yoga Science, has been sponsoring an annual International Congress of Yoga, Meditation, and Holistic Health in Chicago since 1976. In 1978, the inaugural speaker was New Age leader Dr. Buck Minister Fuller, world-renowned innovator and architect and a leading spokesman for the cosmic gospel. The speakers presented to the large audience a blend of Hinduism and Western science that will form the basis for the new world religion of the Antichrist. President Carter sent a message wishing the participants of the Congress well. In part, it read, quote, The constructive melding of Eastern and Western philosophies and the practice in the medical and health field can be of considerable importance to society and to the well-being of all mankind, unquote. In fact, the invasion of the West by Hindu-Buddhist philosophies is destroying mankind here, just as it has in the East. Participants in the 1977 Congress explained the quote-unquote ancient wisdom of Eastern mysticism and what it would do in developing our full potential. Kabbalist Rabbi J. Gelberman said, quote, God can't do anything without me, unquote. Our nature is identical with that of God, added Yogi Raj Roy E. Davis, Chitra Banhu declared, quote, The belief that you are a sinner hinders your growth, unquote. And Jagdish Dave affirmed, quote, My consciousness is God, unquote. The following words from Jonathan Stone were prophetic, quote, I feel that there is a coming world order in which science will merge with monistic philosophy and all the world will be swept up in a new consciousness. The one distinguishing feature in that world order will be the credo, all is one, unquote. That is exactly where science is heading at breakneck speed. A few years ago, Fritjof Kopra wrote The Tao of Physics to explain, quote, the striking parallels between ancient mystical traditions and the discoveries of 20th century physics, unquote. Kopra's latest book, The Turning Point, purports to show, quote, how the revolution in modern physics foreshadows an imminent revolution in all the sciences and a transformation of our worldview and values, unquote. Taoism is a syncretistic blend of Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, and Spiritism. And this, says Dr. Capra, is where modern science is going. He is exactly right. As we have already mentioned, following his trip to the moon on Apollo 14, Edgar Mitchell abandoned the exploration of outer space to join the exploration of inner space, the pursuit of the self or the God within. This is the new frontier of science. Increasing numbers of scientists today are deciding that the universe is a living organism, a universal mind, rather than a mechanism. They reason that we can explore the universe by going deep within ourselves, journeying through inner space to contact this universal self. This is the old occultism, which is fast becoming new science. For example, Brian Josephson, winner of the 1973 Nobel Prize in Physics, quote, has staked his enormous scientific reputation on the possibility that he can gain insights into objective reality by practicing traditional Eastern meditational techniques, that is, looking within himself, unquote. Edgar Mitchell describes the mystical experience that changed his life as, quote, an overwhelming sense of universal consciousness, unquote, which answered his questions about the future of planet Earth. As a result, 
he founded the Institute of Noetic Sciences, whose goals can be described as an attempt to get in touch with man's inherent godhood and to tap into the psychic powers available to the human mind in quote-unquote higher states of consciousness. Like other leading scientists today, Mitchell refers often to what he calls the ancient wisdom, which is simply the old occultism that can be traced back through the secret Gnostic societies such as the Masons and the Rosicrucians to Babylon, Babel, and the Garden of Eden. Dr. Mitchell promotes the idea that science needs to rediscover the psychic powers that the yogis, witch doctors, and voodoo priests have always displayed. The president of Mitchell's Institute for Noetic Sciences is Stanford University professor and Stanford Research Institute scientist Willis W. Harmon. Like Dr. Akoff, Dr. Harmon is a brilliant and popular speaker before the top management of America's largest and most successful corporations, where he spreads his occult philosophy that is gaining increasing acceptance and application in business. Harmon is a close friend of Marilyn Ferguson, who has written The Aquarian Conspiracy to document that the quote-unquote transformation of consciousness that Capra, Mitchell, Harmon, and other top scientists advocate is indeed taking place throughout society. Approaching the End This New Age transformation of consciousness, with its belief that all is one and that we only need to make positive affirmations to change the world, could be the final straw that breaks the capitalist camel's back. Bascalia enthusiastically declares, quote, I fully believe that we now have sufficient knowledge and understanding of the potential of personhood to make hatred, fear, pain, hunger, war, and hopelessness obsolete. We are enough. There is no others. That is communist to blame. Each of us is the other. Unquote. Beautiful words if they were only true, but the entire history of humanity mocks them. There is every reason to believe that Beverly Galleon's Imaginary Guides, Brew Joy's Inner Teacher, Leo Bascalia's Self, Creative Visualization's Higher Self, Spiritualism's quote-unquote Spirit Guides, and Hitler's Unknown Masters are only different names used by the same mastermind in enticing humans to join his cosmic rebellion against the one true God by honoring in his place infinite human potential operating through an alleged universal consciousness. The Soviets, we may be sure, are in touch with the same unknown masters under some of the same and different names. They are, however, using the supposed infinite potential of their psyches to further the communist victory, which they never cease to think about and work toward. As Westerners' naive trust in their ability to use the quote-unquote light side of this dark force for good grows, the communists cheer us on, encouraging our visualizations and positive affirmations of love and peace. There are about 4,000 Soviet agents in the United States promoting the nuclear freeze and disarmament rallies. Such demonstrations, however, are not allowed behind the Iron Curtain. The closing words of John Barron in the October 1982 Reader's Digest condensation of his new book, The KGB's Magical War for Peace, tell the story. Quote, on August 8, 1982, a co-founder of Moscow's only independent disarmament group is being administered drugs against his will in the psychiatric hospital where he is being held. And at Harvard, students and faculty reserved some of their loudest applause for a disarmament spokesman from the KGB, a man from the Lubyanka Center, KGB headquarters, unquote. Capitalism, the archenemy of communism, Forget detente, that is a fiction, is over the cliff, barely hanging on. The freedom it boasts has been abused and now works against it. The profit motive, once the secret of its success, has become capitalism's downfall. American citizens have turned traitor spy, betraying their country for the 30 pieces of silver which the Soviets offered for military secrets. Greedy salesmen and businessmen, motivated by lust for profit and power, have sold the Soviets the very advanced technology with which they now threaten us. The vultures are circling, watching their next meal grow more vulnerable, exercising patience, knowing that it is only a matter of time. This is not to say Reaganomics will not work. The prophesied unprecedented peace and prosperity will assuredly come, 
and probably lies just ahead. The financial collapse of the Western world will be postponed. Bit by bit, however, worldwide socialism inevitably spreads and grows daily stronger. Even now there is a distribution of wealth underway, as Western democracies, directly or through the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, continue to funnel billions of dollars to communist and third world countries in the form of quote-unquote loans that will probably never be repaid. As poverty, disease, and famine increase in the underdeveloped areas of the world, the mounting pressure upon Western nations will cause an increasing redistribution of their wealth to the world's poor. However, there is not enough time left for that lengthy scenario to take place. We will not gradually fall into the Soviet's lap, nor will they destroy us in a nuclear barrage. The new world government will come about through a surprising chain of events, yet they are all illogical. This chain reaction will be triggered by an incredible happening, frightening beyond imagination, that will leave the world in a state of shocked paralysis. In one staggering moment, the United States will have been reduced to chaos and collapse. This event, however, will have rescued the world from a communist takeover, for the Soviets and Chinese will be in a state of shocked immobility also. It will be out of the frying pan into the fire. However, for the new world government that will emerge from this vacuum will be far worse than if the Kremlin itself had assumed control.